it was amazing how it all fell apart for the Bills and felt just right for the Chiefs. We're going to talk later about some of the coaching decisions that may have left something to, to be desired over the weekend. One of the images that burned in my brain, and I tweeted this half jokingly, it was after the Bills went ahead the first time in the final minute of the game, uh, or in the final two minutes of the game, rather. I, I, I He was so fired up and so animated I thought, just let this guy play defense. Just he's good. He's he's physically <laughs> talented enough to play uh -huh. safety, defensive back, linebacker. Put him out there. This guy is a, a beast physically, and he was so motivated. He was so focused, and it was hard to see him not get an opportunity to get out there on the field and show us what he could do in overtime. He took the high road after the game uh, about overtime. Yeah, they got to make their plays during the game. I, I, I get that. I, I respect him for saying all the right things. Let everybody else complain about the overtime rule, and plenty of people are complaining about it. And, you know, Shereen, I've been looking at the box score of that playoff game you mentioned from early 1982, just a week before the catch game, by the way. I can't remember whether or not the Chargers scored a first-drive field goal in that game. They won it with a 29-yard field goal from Rolf Benerski, who was the – Host of Wheel of Fortune for a brief period of yeah. time. There's your well uh, or very uh, obscure <laughs> trivia yeah. of the day. I just I, I need to find a more detailed box score to see if actually they did that on first drive because it, it didn't become a thing until 2009 with the Vikings and the Saints. When the Saints win the toss in overtime, they had a decent return. They get a couple of first downs, a couple of questionable calls. Next thing you know, you're in range for a field goal. You'll walk off, and it's got kind of an unsatisfying feel to it. They changed the overtime rule just a bit, but obviously we still have the first drive touchdown capability. And I think that if they never change it – well, let me rephrase that. If they don't change it after last night, they never will change it. Because I think last night – we've seen it happen four or five times – since the rule changed, where you had a walk-off touchdown in overtime of a playoff game. Last night, though, I think it reached a critical mass of dissatisfaction and a sense of unfairness, because I think whoever wins that toss is scoring a touchdown to win the game. Whichever team gets the ball in that overtime session is scoring the touchdown, so they need to have a way that's more fair, that takes the coin toss out of it, that either brings strategy into it, or gives both teams an opportunity to possess the ball. I just don't know what the right solution is. All I know is what they're doing now created a result last night that I think left a lot of people wanting more. Oh, no question about it. And guess what? Guess the team that proposed a rule change in 2019 to allow in the postseason for both teams to get the ball. That would be the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Bills were one of the teams that said no to that. And that kept getting tabled and tabled and tabled. And you actually got Clark Hunt to, to say, hey, I think we can get this passed, but it's going to be for the postseason only. I think people would be happy with that. Some change to the rule for the postseason. I'm fine with the regular season with the way it is. I get it, especially now that it's 17 games. I have no problem with, with keeping, po keeping overtime the same in the regular season. But in the postseason, it needs to change. Both teams need to, be, at, at minimum, be guaranteed a possession if you're going to keep it somewhat similar. But I even like the college rule better. And, and I know MDS has proposed and the Ravens did the, the spot and choose a proposal that way. Any way, some way to make it better than what we saw that left us wanting more. And I remember when Tom Brady took the Patriots down and, and scored. I was left wanting to see Patrick Mahomes get an opportunity then. Yesterday, I wanted to see Josh Allen get an opportunity to match what Patrick Mahomes had done. And you're right. With both of those defenses spent 25 points in the final two minutes, whoever won that coin toss was going to win that game. And maybe they sh just the Bills should have tried an onside kick to get the ball because they were going to score wherever they were. I had forgotten that we spoke to Clark Hunt at the league meetings, the last league meetings before the world yeah. turned upside down three years ago where he actually got access to people and had a chance to discuss these things. And he did have some optimism that they would be able to change the overtime rule for the postseason. And that's uncharacteristic because a lot of times what happens – a team gets burned by a bad rule and they are not inclined to lobby against that rule because there's this loose sense next time around we're going to benefit and next time around 
the Chiefs benefited. Maybe that's why Josh Allen isn't complaining. Mm -hmm. Next time around, maybe the Bills benefit. <laughs> the Packers have been stung by it twice, back-to-back -back years. 2014 NFC Championship in Seattle, 2015 Divisional Round game in Arizona. Packers have been st t stung twice. Patriots have had it fall to their advantage twice. Maybe the Bills next time around will get it uh, to work for them, assuming it's not changed. And I, I really do think there is some momentum to get it changed, Shireen. I I've heard the argument in the past that the rule needs to be the same in overtime for the regular season and the postseason. Sims and I talked about this earlier today. That's nonsensical because you have ties potentially in the right. regular season, not in the postseason. So it's already different. It's already different. Yeah. So it's fine to have a different procedure in the regular season and in the postseason because in the postseason, it's winner go home. In the postseason, you need to have somebody who emerges as the victor. There's a lot of different ways it could go. I've got my, my two-point conversion penalty shot type idea where you go back and forth, and I think the XFL – Maybe using that again. I know they used it their last time around, but they never actually used it in a game. But that was part of their rule procedures. The spot and shoes that the Ravens proposed that MDS, as you mentioned, first thought of 20 years ago. But something to be fair. Not, not more fair, just fair. I want fair because right now it's unfair. I just want something that is fair and equitable for both teams so the better team has a chance to win, not the team that just happens to get the coin toss to go their way. Well, and it was dramatic the way that game ended yesterday. There's no question about that. But it just left you wanting more. I wanted more, and I still want more. And I would love to see those games play again Sunday and play the Sunday after next. I mean, you look at what they've done in the postseason over the last two postseasons. It's been really fun to watch. But I just wanted more. I wanted Josh Allen to get another opportunity. And I feel I don't know Josh Allen. I've never rooted for Josh Allen. But I really felt badly for him, the way he played, especially in the fourth quarter and especially in the last two minutes, that he didn't get one more opportunity to pull the Bills out and give them a chance to, to extend the game. And then if it ends after that, I'm okay with it. He would have gotten his opportunity, but I just was left wanting more. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.